Francis Collins is a, is a very prestigious uh, biologist and physician, uh, formerly head of the Human Genome Project and now uh, director of the National Institutes of Health. In 2006, Francis Collins wrote uh, a very well-known book, widely read book, The Language of God, which at first glance appears to be an argument for God's existence based on the information in DNA. But as one reads the book, it quickly becomes clear that that's not Francis Collins's argument in that book. In fact, he attributes DNA and all the sequences in it to random or unguided natural processes, Darwinian processes. In fact, he relies on so-called junk DNA, sequences of DNA that apparently have no function, as evidence that Darwin's theory explains everything we see in living things. He's willing to uh, concede that uh, the origin of the universe and perhaps the existence of the moral law provide evidence for God's existence. But Francis Collins in that book attributes everything about living things to Darwinism. And my problem with that is that Darwinism does not fit the evidence despite what Francis Collins writes. In fact, both chemical and biological evolution, neo-Darwinian evolution, have failed to account for the major innovations in the history of life. We do not have an evolutionary account of the origin of the first life. We do not have an evolutionary mechanism that can account for the origin of of, uh, of the large innovations in form that occur during the history of life. Uh, we, the Darwinian mechanism doesn't account for the new genes and proteins, the new information you needed to build new forms of life, and it doesn't account for the origin of, of body plants. Francis Collins, who, who actually knows quite a bit about DNA, having been formerly head of the Human Genome Project, uses as one of his arguments for Darwinism that much of our DNA, if not most of it, is without function, that is, it's junk. Uh, he concedes that some of that apparently non-functional DNA uh, has turned out, or will turn out, to have some function, but he still argues that most of it is non-functional and that this junk, this accumulation of garbage in our genome, is evidence that we are, the, we are the result of unguided natural processes, that is, Darwinian evolution. Francis Collins makes the junk DNA argument, um, or the supposed fact of junk DNA, that our chromosomes are replete with nonsensical sequences, the cornerstone of his argument in his book, The Language of God. And I'm almost quoting him, but he states that it strains credulity to think that more than a few of these sequences uh, have any kind of function, that most of them are vestiges of mutational errors that have been, through the vicissitudes of history, fixed in our lineage. The problem with uh, Collins's claim is that not a day goes by now without more scientific papers coming out showing that what used to be considered junk is in fact functional. has overlooked the now, I would say, almost you know, hundreds if not thousands of experimentally documented instances of functionality that have been discerned, detected, for many of these sequences that uh, he casually dismisses as being nonsensical. Collins himself, perhaps in his position as an administrator, has not kept up with the scientific literature. The scientific literature is providing abundant evidence that the, the whole notion of junk DNA is in fact a myth. One uh, common objection to intelligent design uh, is called uh, God of the Gaps. And it's the idea that uh, the argument for design in living things is based on our ignorance. So when we see something that uh, we can't explain with natural mechanisms, we just attribute it to design or God. <clears throat> uh, Francis Collins makes this argument in his book, The Language of God, in 2006. The problem is intelligent design isn't that at all. It doesn't work that way. Intelligent design is the idea that we can infer from evidence in nature 
that some features of the world are better explained by an intelligent cause than by unguided natural processes. This includes some features of living things. So one cannot make a design inference based on ignorance. It's not an argument from ignorance, it's an argument from the evidence. If the evidence shows that we have a feature that we know from our experience is better explained by an intelligent cause than by unguided processes, then we are justified in inferring design. Ironically, Collins, Collins himself is using a, an of the gaps argument uh, in his book, The Language of God, but it's not a God of the gaps argument, it's a Darwin of the gaps argument. And here's why. Collins sees things in living cells, in human cells, such as the apparent non-functionality of much of our DNA. And because he cannot come up with an explanation for that, he attributes it, attributes it to Darwinian evolution. The problem is that the more we learn about that supposedly non-functional DNA, the more we realize that it is in fact functional. So his whole argument for Darwinism has to shrink with each new scientific discovery. Now that's a Darwin of the gaps argument.